when am I going to be able to get Copilot? Why can't I find any instructions about how to install it and use it? What about my job? Should I be worried about this? What about security? Surely we shouldn't just be letting ChatGPT look at our confidential documents. It's been a few weeks since the Microsoft 365 Copilot announcement, and there's been a lot of really interesting discussion, ranging from people who are very excited through to people who are understandably quite worried about what this might mean for them. And there's been a recent update from Microsoft that I wanted to take you through in answer to some of these questions and also pick up on some of those other ones that I've seen come through on my previous video. So this is the latest here from Microsoft, which is giving us the first official answer to when will this be available. Now, Maybe you are watching this and you're one of the people in the lucky 600 companies, but chances are you're not. So here's the situation right here. They have been testing it with 20 companies, large enterprises by the look of it, and it is now being rolled out to another 600 customers in invitation only preview. I'm quite sure they are overwhelmed. I mean, my video got overwhelmed with people asking, when can I get my hands on this? I'm quite sure Microsoft has a long queue of people saying, but I must get this now. It's clear from this blog post and other conversations and things I've seen online that Microsoft is going through a lot of testing with this. Bringing AI into those tools we work with every day, like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and so on, is going to be a very big change to the way we work. And we will have a chat about what that might mean for your job a little bit later. There is a lot of change management that's going to be involved in this. We're starting to think now about the concept of having a digital assistant and working collaboratively with a with a chatbot in a way that we haven't before. And so I'm really pleased that they're putting it through these paces, although I really wish I was in one of those 600 companies right now. I don't currently have access to it, but I am actually following this space very closely and watching everything that comes out to help us all outside of those companies keep across it. So we're going to have to hang on a little bit longer before we get access to it. This is also why you can't find any information online right now about how to deploy it. Now, in terms of licensing, again, Microsoft hasn't revealed anything about licensing yet. And this is typical. When I follow Microsoft announcements, there's usually the big launch announcement first. There'll be some kind of preview and licensing generally gets announced around the same time that the product becomes generally available. However, there's a clue here if you read between the lines of what's going on here. And this is another important part of the announcement, helping every customer to get AI ready. So this is something that we're all going to be able to benefit from immediately, even if we're not in that lucky invitation only list, they're rolling out semantic index for Copilot. So this is about doing all of the work in the background that will be able to index in a way that the large language model will be able to provide meaning on. So the example they're giving here is that if you start to use these tools, the Copilot tools in Microsoft 365, and you're asking it for something generic like the March sales report, then this indexing will understand what that means, who that's likely to come from. So this is indexing that's being done on your tenant locally. This is not being shared back outside with any other AI models. And we will come back to that security question as well, because it's really, really important. But you'll notice here in terms of licensing, look where they're doing this indexing, search results for E3 and E5 customers. Now, this is not any licensing announcement. I'm just reading between the lines here that it's likely that those licenses are where this is going to become something that you can utilize. Whether it's an extra cost, I don't know. But I would say if you're on E3 or E5, that's the market that they're targeting at this point, which honestly makes sense. So no announcement there yet about when we're getting it in public preview or general availability or any of the answers to the licensing questions. But it's clear that this is real. It's being tested. It's being rolled out. So it's not vaporware. This is progressing. And there is feedback from Microsoft and those customers coming through. So we'll keep an eye on all of that as it progresses. Let's work into that security question via a couple of other things first here that come up a lot. First one here is around hallucinations. And if you've worked with any of these large language models, if you've had a play with ChatGPT, chances are you will have discovered by now that it is inclined to make things up and be very convincing about it. Now, in terms of making things up that are not in context, remember I'm talking about asset management. I've done all these searches around asset management at this time. Um, it's found the video of us singing We Are The Champions at the company retreat, which is apparently on YouTube and has 10,000 views. Now, I mean, I don't mind a bit of karaoke, but that didn't happen. It didn't, it's, it 
it's just completely made that up. So one of the core pieces around Copilot here is that it is actually giving you the references to where it's getting things from. And it is working inside a lot more contextual information in your tenant than when you use ChatGPT online. Now that does not stop it from hallucinating. This is one of the known factors with these models and absolutely one of the skills that we're all going to need to be aware of and to learn as we start to use these things or if you're already using them is to make sure that you check its work, that you check its facts. I have heard stories as I've been talking to customers about people taking shortcuts with this, producing things that are actually factually incorrect to a more experienced eye. So please, 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 you must always make sure that you are fact checking what you're getting from the AI. It's not designed, therefore, and to this question about what about my job, will this take my job, which is a absolutely natural first fear that many people have. Not yet and not entirely. These tools are designed to take away some of that grunt work. It's designed to take away the labor of doing a first draft of something if you're bringing things up on the screen that you've already created rather than starting with a blank screen. It's going to get you further quicker. However, you do want to think about what's going on with your job and your role. And this is not, I mean, it is a substantial change, but we've had a lot of substantial changes with technology forever, right? So if your job is entirely just doing the grunt work, if all you're doing is, for instance, going into PowerPoint and creating animations, and that's the entirety of your job, then yeah, you probably should be worried about your job. Um, but Chances are that's not what you're doing. Think about the value add that you're bringing. The question here was from someone saying, I'm an analyst, what should what should I do? What are you bringing to it that the chatbot can't do? So the chatbot can go through and analyze that data. How good is it at understanding what the end result needs to be for a particular business purpose? And so there are always different things going on in there. I work in consulting. One of the things we will quite often do is document requirements out of a long document. I've been testing ChatGPT to see how well it does with that. Certainly makes it a lot faster, but I do still need to go back, check its work. I need to apply more creative thinking and different kind of solutioning than what it's been able to come up with so far. But if that means that I can give my customer a better outcome, a faster outcome, hopefully that customer is more delighted, will share that with other people, and I can do more of the work that I enjoy. Now, this is a very optimistic view of the world. I am naturally an optimist, but I think in terms of what does it mean for your job, you've got to start thinking about those elements of the job that are more creative, that are more around working with people and understanding bigger picture things. And it's really about taking away those laborious manual tasks. So then getting towards the security question here, one of these questions that comes up a lot is around is it current? Will it pull current information? And this is coming from when you're working with ChatGPT online, it's very clearly stating that the language model is trained on data only up to a certain date. So if you're trying to use it to find things about current events or new releases and so on, it will fail at that. This is different though. We're bringing it inside the work that we've already done. So once we start to bring a large language model inside the tenant, inside the environment where you are working on your documents, PowerPoints, and so on, then it's got access to all of those things, even if you did it yesterday or five minutes ago. So the language model is trained on data up to a certain point, but you're actually bringing the language model into the context of what you're working on. So it's not quite the same thing. It can certainly work on documents that you've produced, you know, five minutes ago. It's not limited in that same way because it's existing in a different form. Which leads us into this very real question about security. There's no way we would allow AI to access secure documents. Does it use my data to train the model? On the question of whether the model learns from your data, here's the Microsoft Frequently Asked Questions, which very clearly states, no, it doesn't. If we have a look at the blog post that was written about Copilot for Dynamics 365, so this is the CRM and business application side of the Microsoft suite, then there's actually a much longer response here that explains this in more detail. What it's doing is bringing that AI into the context of where you're working and working with that data in your organization. But the language model itself is not being retrained on that data and it is not taking it back out into the world. So once you're bringing it in there, you are actually much safer working here than you are taking your business data and pasting it into ChatGPT online, in which case there's no security on that. You are actually putting it out into the language model, but Copilot is bringing the language model securely 
into where you already work and it's not retraining on that data, it's applying it across the data where it already is. Interestingly here, this is going to work on documents that are stored on your OneDrive or your SharePoint files and so on. It's not actually accessing other document repositories. So if you are working with highly confidential commercial things in different repositories, it's not actually accessing that. Certainly you do need to, and this is something you can do in preparation, pay attention to how are your folders structured and who has access to things. Because if everyone in the organization has access to everything and they don't know it yet, bringing this kind of stuff in is going to uh, reveal some things. So you might want to make sure that your internal use of OneDrive and SharePoint and so on are solid. And then there's my favorite questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Clippy, but it works uh, for those of you who are old enough to remember Clippy or those of you who are just enjoying the Clippy retro situation. Um, I am certainly hoping that this is delivering on all of the promises of perhaps what we might have hoped for back in those days. Would you like help with this document? It was immensely annoying. But yes, I, I do enjoy the references back to Clippy. <laughs> it's great fun. So what's next? If you're in one of those Lucky 600 customers, then I hope you have a great time and I hope you improve this for the rest of us. This absolutely is going to change the way that we all work. It is going to put certain jobs under threat as well as creating new roles for the future. And it is worth starting to think about what does that mean for your role? Absolutely. I'm very interested to hear any other questions you have or how this AI that you already have access to, even with things like ChatGPT is already affecting your job and what you think that might mean for you, pop those things in the chat below. Don't forget to give this video a like if you find value in it, helps it to reach more people and I do appreciate that very much. Thank you as always for watching and stay tuned. I'm keeping you up to date with all of this as more comes to hand.